Okay, so a video here on the CRF 300, or actually 250, you could include them both in this, versus the Himalayan. I've had a few emails recently, I'm just going to read you one, uh, which struck a chord really, and, it, and other people might be sat at home thinking they're in a similar position. Um, Peter from Australia, I currently own a 2020 Himalayan, his son's got one as well, we both like them, but I'm getting a bit older, he's 63 years old, and he's finding that he wants to move to lighter bikes, so if he's riding by himself, he can pick them up if he drops them. He says, I'm not a novice, but not that skilled off-road. I'm thinking of buying a new CRF 300 for this reason. Also, even though I have never had any problems with the Himalayan, I do, do worry about the electronics, such as the engine management and fuel injection being an Indian bike. The Honda brand has a great reputation for reliability. I don't ride fast off-road, but I like the idea of a lighter bike to conserve my limited amount of energy. Uh, could you please give your opinion? I've also had one, which I think there's going to be a lot of people in a similar boat to that, aren't there? I uh, also had one from Oscar, who's 23, up in Newcastle. Uh, I recently joined the TRF up in Newcastle uh, to get into the off-road scene. He's leaning towards the Himalayan because someday he wants to use the bike for travel, so would like to learn to off-road on his future trips. Uh, the appeal of the Himalayan is cheaper cost to buy, uh, and it looks better in his opinion. I am concerned due to the weight that I would lag behind on the trails. However, especially as a beginner from your videos, I get the impression that the low centre of gravity, tractor factor engine and easygoing nature of the bike might may mean it would still work for me. What do I think? Okay, Honda CRF Himalayan. A year ago, I did a video with a guy called Glenn, uh, who's, uh, who I've known for a few years, and he worked as a development rider for Honda back when they were bringing in the CRF250. Uh, and he also worked on the Africa Twin. So a very experienced rider, a good rider, uh, and he's got really good import. And me and him went out on the CRF300 in the Himalayan, and we did some lanes, and we meant to do a video, but the sound came out really bad. We were talking together with two intercoms, and his audio didn't come out very well. But we took the two bikes, the CRF300, a 2021 bike, I think it is, um, and my Himalayan, a Euro 5 Himalayan, and we did some snotty lanes around my area, around North Devon. And I think to conclude, our conclusion, which I think is, it really cuts to the heart of it, is that the CRF is a trail bike. It was designed to be a trail bike. Everything about that bike is a trail bike, from the long travel suspension, the bench seat, the ground clearance, the peg position, the bar position. Everything about that bike is designed to be a trail bike, which is completely glaringly obvious, really. Um, and so we kind of concluded that the CRF is a is good trail bike. It's, you know, it's not great. It's not stratospheric great, but it's a very good, capable trail bike that always wants it's that comes out of its shell. That is, it it is as it's at its best when it's on the trail. Therefore, if you were wanting a trail bike, I think there's no doubt about it, the CRF, in this case a rally, but I would say if you're doing trail riding, just get the L because it's cheaper and less plastic to break. But the, the CRF is in its element off-road. Um, and, and, and it's a no-brainer, really, uh, that, that what it was designed to do, it is at its best at. What I would say the difference between the 300 and the 250 is that the 300 has moved it its capability slightly, well, as it has increased its capability on road more than the 250. There's a bit more grunt in the engine, there's more mid-range, which makes it more enjoyable and easier to ride on longer stretches of road. The engine's not needing to be revved as high or worked as hard. So I think the 300 is, it does a better job of being an all-round dual sport bike although its strength really is on the trails. So, Himalayan or CRF, if you want to conquer trails, I think it's a, it's a natural conclusion, the CRF, because it was designed to be that. I think the Himalayan, what we were both impressed with, me and Glenn, is that it will do pretty much the same trails as the CRF will. Uh, there are limits, ultimately, with its ground clearance. There's a good couple of inches less ground clearance on the Himalayan than there is on the CRF. Now, some people say that's a big issue. Personally, the type of lanes that most novice to semi-intermediate riders are going to be doing, I don't think the ground clearance is going to be a big an issue as people think it's going to be. I think where the Himalayan sometimes struggle is in the shallow to medium-sized ruts because your pegs sit very low on the Himalayan, which means your boots catch on both sides of the ruts. And that can be quite disconcerting and I guess also hazardous because you don't want to you run the risk of twisting your ankle out if you catch it on a rut. So you've got to be quite cautious 
of that. And also the pegs are quite wide. So your pegs are, your, your foot pegs are low and wide on the Himalayan, which does make it susceptible to rut riding. So if you're going to be doing a load of ruts, I think again, Himal um, the CRF is a no-brainer. I think the difference with the Himalayan is that it was designed to be a 50-50 bike. Royal Enfield designed it as a bike for the Himalayas. So they didn't design it to be a trail bike. They designed it to be an all-road bike. And that's a massive distinguishing factor from the CRF. So for me, it means that the Himalayan works better as a road bike. I just think the riding position works better. The suspension is shorter travel and a little bit stiffer. So you get better compliance uh, and more control on the road. When I've done longer road trips, uh, say coming back from Bulgaria, I came through the Alps, it handles really well on the twisties in a way that the CRF would never handle in the same league because the suspension is just too soft and, and soggy, certainly as standard. Whereas the Himalayan sits very flat and it allows you to engage with road riding to me far more aggressively and engagingly than on the CRF. So if my trip was dominated by road work with sporadic bits of trail road riding, the Himalayan, I would say, is a better bet than the CRF. So when we did a coast-to-coast -coast America trip, New York to LA, there were sections where we did trails midway or across, and sometimes I'd go off in an evening and do a few trails. But the majority of that 6,000-mile trip were on tarmac. The Himalayan, for me, was a brilliant bike for that trip. It was the perfect bike because it, it coped on the road. It was a little bit slow in the mountains. But on the trails, I could still take it on the trails and explore. The CRF, I think, would have been troublesome on that trip because it would have been tiresome on the road. It wouldn't have allowed me to engage as well with roads like uh, Tail of the Dragon, which is a really good snaking uh, tarmac road. And so the CRF would have been the wrong bike for that trip. Admittedly, if we were doing the Trans America Trail, which is a coast to coast, predominantly off road, the CRF would have been a better bet. So to come back to the question of what these guys are asking, Peter in Australia, you know, for going through the outback, if he's going to do some outback riding, having been through the outback on posty bikes and knowing what that kind of those trails are like, I would say he probably would be better on a CRF. Um, I think, and I've had the bikes on the scales today. I've just been weighing them, and there is a forty kilo difference. Uh, the Himalayan comes in at two hundred and four kilos, and the CRF comes in at one hundred and sixty kilos. So that's forty kilos difference. Now I don't think that. I don't, that sounds like a big difference, and I don't think in real world terms there's as big a difference as that suggests. A quarter, you know, it's a quarter as heavy again, the Himalayan. I don't think that's as big a deal as, as, as the paper spec suggests. And picking the two bikes up, mm, I, don't think there's a, I don't think there's a great deal in it. If you're trying to choose the right bike for what's the easiest to pick up, yeah, go for the CRF, but it's still, a, you know, it's still 160 kilos laying flat, which is still a, a lot of mass to lift, certainly if you've got your luggage on it, and the bike does sit tall. You know, the seat height is over, not, I, I had the tape measure on the seats, both under-exaggerate their seat heights on the spec sheet. The, the CRF, I think, was 95, uh, 950 mil tall, um, static with no weight on it, and the Himalayan was about 86, so they're both quite tall bikes, so... You know, you've got to bear in that bear that in mind that neither bike you're going to want to be dropping. And if, to be honest, if you're 63 and going through the outback on your own, the best bike to do that without worry of getting stuck onto the bike or not being able to lift it, get a CT125. That's a far better bike for for the slightly nervous rider to go into remote parts because a CRF250 or a 300 could easily bite you in the outback. You know, you're going to be carrying a faster pace. Um, if it's flat and if it's upturned, difficult to lift, certainly if you're tired, certainly if you've dropped it a few times. And obviously, you've got weight up high when you've got your luggage on. And that applies to both bikes. I think you've just got to say with the Himalayan, you've got a centre stand with that. And you've got front racks and you've got a rear rack as standard. So, um, again, it's 40 kilo difference, but you've probably got 10 kilos of hard parts, luggage, uh, metal parts that, that, that bite into that 40 uh, and which you're going to equip the CRF for similar purposes, you're going to have to bolt on stuff anyway. Uh, and I also I also like the fact that you've got a, a, a centre stand on the uh, Himalayan. It makes puncture work a, a, a lot easier. But for Peter going into the Outback, uh, I think probably the CRF is a, is a, is 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 the bike I'd choose. He raises a question of reliability. Um, I won't worry about taking the Himalayan into the outback. Uh, I kind of have faith in the bike. I think what's let the bike down, and clearly Peter's got a concern because he's read it online, 
about the relays and other electrical issues and I think that's that's an issue that Royal Enfield should have nipped in the buds much sooner. To be still selling bikes with faulty or failing relays in was just, I don't want to say negligent, but not great. You know, I had a bike cut out of me on the road, just dies. Now, if you're on the outside, if you're on the fast lane of a motorway and your bike suddenly dies at 75 mile an hour and there's nowhere to go, you're in, you're in trouble. And they were selling that bike with them bloody relays in and they were doing a soft exchange at dealerships. Dealerships were putting better ones in or you had to buy your own Bosch ones. Not good enough. You know, to me, to have uh, circulate such a negative uh, impression of a bike uh, for something so trivial to solve, I don't, I don't understand the logic. So Peter's got this in his mind that his bike's going to break down. You know, 20 quid's worth of relays and he won't have that issue. The fuel injection is K in, so that's not going to fail. Um, the other common issue with the Himalayan is the head bearings, which again, a silly fault that should have been rectified ages ago that should have never carried on filtering through and, and into the forums and, and, and giving the bike a bad name. Would it deter me from taking the Himalayan into the outback? No, it wouldn't, but I would take a pocket full of relays just in case. The CRF, I know that that bike would never let me down. Now, in terms of Oscar, 23-year-old in Newcastle, wanting to go trail riding for the first time, um, what I would say to him is the Himalayan would do all the lanes, as I've said, bar you know the extreme ones. It, it will cope in a way that will surprise people. The Himalayan always surprises people about by how good it is off-road. I think it always surprises me still what it will track to up because the long stroke motor means it is very novice friendly. And when I've had people take the fleet of bikes out, the CRF, the GS, the KTM 390, the Himalayan out, off-road, I would say there's a majority of people favour the Himalayan off-road who've never been off-road before because it, it, it's, the motor is so soft, so torquey, so crisp and easy to use. And the, because of those foot pegs are lower, you don't feel as high as as elevated, which gives people almost a trail vertigo, I think, on the CRF. They think very high, and when they're nervous, that ODX sort of accentuates their nervousness. Whereas the Himalayan, it brings you closer to the ground, the bike feels very stable, and therefore it gives a rider confidence. Um, so this is a, I think this is a tricky one, and I think he said it himself. He likes the look of the Himalayan, therefore I'll probably get the Himalayan, persevere with it, learn how to ride it, and I think it will, as I've said, it will go most places that the CRF will go. In terms of pace, I don't, I won't worry about pace, and if you're riding with people who make you worry about pace, you're worrying, you're riding with the wrong people because pace and trying to keep up with a faster group, trail riding, whatever bike you're on is always going to end up in, in trouble. I mean, I was out the other day, I was on my GP450 riding with some guys on beta Alps and things, and, you know, I was I was going faster than I normally would to keep up. That's a fast bike, that GP450, very capable, but I was still riding it beyond my natural comfort zone, um, and therefore I was putting myself at probably bigger risk than if I'd have been riding on my own at a gentler pace. So if you're riding with people, whatever bike you're on, that encourage you to go faster, you know, try and do something about that, sit at the back, or find another group to ride out with. So in terms of which is which bike he's going to be able to keep pace with, which 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 of the two bikes are going to enable him to keep pace better with his group, yes, maybe the CRF does carry a bit more pace because it's got longer travel suspension. You don't have to ride the bike. The Himalayan, you really have to work with it. You have to be soft. You have to use your armour. Your arms and your legs have to be part of the suspension on the Himalayan because the bike itself hasn't got it. So you do have to read the terrain more, I think, on the Himalayan. You do have to be softer. You do have to come up to the bike, let the bike come up to you and ride it. CRF, you know, that big long travel suspension is doing all the work. You can sit down on the CRF even and, and plough on through. Himalayan, that's not going to work because it's got more road bias suspension. Um, so if Oscar likes his Himalayan, I'll just get Himalayan. Um, I think it comes down to that. What do you prefer? Now, I, I, I think it's important to stress that um, you've got to ride these bikes yourself. There's no point listening to somebody on the forum uh, or, or sending a message and saying, what should I buy? You've got to ride them. You've got to, and you've got to ask yourself what do you want out of the bike and also what do you like? And also accept that whichever of these two bikes you buy, there's compromise. If you buy the CRF, there'll be times on the road you think, God, I wish I'd got... I wish I'd got stiffer suspension and a screen and a, other bits and things like that. You know, you think you wish you were on a more road orientated bike. Equally, when you're on the Himalayan on a, on a tricky trail, you might think, oh, I wish I'd got 40 kilos less weight to haul up this lane or whatever. 
So there's always going to be a, comp a compromise. There is no perfect buy. I suppose why I naturally steer towards the Himalayan is I think it just does a really good job of blending road and trail together into a package that can tackle both pretty admirably. There's limits. It's not fast on the road and it's not light on the trails, but it'll do trail and it'll do road. The CRF 300 is, is a conqueror on the trails. It's a good trail bike. And now that 300 lump, it's more but it's more it's more kind to your body on the road it'll call more kind to your mind because there's that mid-range is it worth is the 300 rally worth a thousand fifteen hundred pound more than the himalayan i don't think it is i think honda have overcooked their prices a little bit but if you're not price sensitive that's not an issue in terms of the serviceability the crf is eight thousand miles and the himalayan is still three thousand miles and I think that's a big, you know, that's still an issue. Yes, the Himalayan, you can self-service it, change the oil. Once you don't know how to do your valve clearances, you never need to touch a dealer again. If you can do your head bearings yourself, that's it, you're on your way. Having said that, just having that peace of mind of an 8,000 mile service interval, I think goes really in favour of it and helps compensate some of that increased price of the CRF. You know, so um, I think what we've got is two good bikes. Uh... The Honda is more mechanically sound. The Himalayan is, is still, it's still got a few niggles. I mean, it's still the bike in my fleet that gave me the most troubles last year, whether it were relays or red bearings. You know, bear that in mind. Um, but we've got two good bikes, and I think it comes back to the conclusion that me and Glenn had when we were riding a year or so ago on cloggy lanes around here. That the CRF is a trail bike. It wants to sniff out every trail. And if you if that's the type of riding you're going to do, I think it's it's unquestionably the better bike. If you're going to occasionally do trail, but spend a lot of time on the road, I think for me, my natural inclination would be the Himalayan. Um, and I think that's 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 it really. If you're asking which bike should you buy, it's an impossible answer without riding them both and making your own mind up the problem is on obviously honda don't have enough bikes in to sell let alone um give test rides out so you've got to buy blind uh, i would say if you can afford a 300 get a 300 over a 250 because i just think it's a better all-round bike and i found that i had a i had a 250 rally on the fleet at the same time as a 300 rally and everyone who rode them back to back everyone pretty much i think the one person who said oh i prefer the heavy nature of the 250 everyone preferred the 300 so if you can stretch to the 300 go for this, this this 300 so i hope that helped peter peter i would buy a crf i would uh i think for going through the outback through australia you're going to be in sand perhaps single track road i would take a crf because i know without fail it will get me into the outback and back out the outback without any issue at all oscar who likes to look at the himalayan wants to do a bit of trail riding get a himalayan put some tkc 80s on it away you go crash it to your arts content put some heavy braced bars on get some from cooper 30 odd quid 40 quid that'll do and some hangars and you're away to go that's an indestructible bike for bashing around on trails a perfect green lane bike and just maybe i would say oscar get on the owners forum and join some of the riding groups there because everyone's out on a himalayan therefore every trail is himalayan friendly so get on the owners forum go out with some like-minded people on like-minded bikes and and just learn to enjoy the just enjoy the bike. So that's it. CRF or Himalayan? Fucking hell, I don't know. I like them both. I like them both. But for two people, I'd give a different answer. Send me if you've got in a similar conundrum. Email me and I'll see what I can do. Cheers, bye.